All right. 53 years old. Uh, definitely uh, turning to much more serious yeah. news now. Turning to politics, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu apparently running out of patience with President Barack Obama. Irate over the U.S. refusal to veto a U.N. Security Council resolution condemning Israeli settlements in the West Bank, Netanyahu is signaling an interest, more than an interest, to start working soon with the Trump administration. Our Orrin Lieberman is live in Jerusalem with the very latest. Look, this is nothing new, but... Uh, you know, Benjamin Netanyahu not mincing his words here. What's new here is the level of criticism. We've known these two had a strained relationship, but it's incredible to see the speed at which, it, at which it's deteriorating here in its final days. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu breaking effectively diplomatic protocol and his criticism here, lashing out not only at President Barack, uh, Barack Obama, but also at Secretary of State John Kerry. Think about this. On Christmas Day here in Jerusalem, here in the Holy Land, Netanyahu summoned not only the U.S. ambassador, but also the ambassadors from 10 countries that voted for the Security Council resolution. But they all met with the foreign ministry. It was the U.S. ambassador in particular who met privately with Netanyahu, Netanyahu expressing his fury not only in that meeting, but also at the cabinet meeting. Over decades, uh, American administrations and Israeli governments have disagreed about settlements. But we agreed that the Security Council was not the place to resolve this issue. As I told John Kerry on Thursday, friends don't take friends to the Security Council. Netanyahu making it very clear he's very willing to work with President-elect Trump when he takes office in a few weeks. Don, this story isn't over yet. Israel is still concerned about what might be a follow-up resolution that would try to set parameters, conditions essentially, for negotiations between Israelis and Palestinians. Ian, thank you very much. I appreciate that. I want to bring in the ambassador now, Ron Dermer. He is the Israeli ambassador to the United States and is a former senior advisor to Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Thank you so much for joining us uh, this Merry morning. Merry Christmas here and happy Hanukkah to you. Merry viewers. Christmas and happy Hanukkah to you as well. I have to ask you, do you know anything about this, this meeting yesterday? With the American ambassador? Yeah. Yeah, I just want to uh, uh, say something to Orrin. The reason why the only ambassador that the Prime Minister of Israel met with was the American ambassadors, that's the only country where we have any expectation to actually stand with us at the United Nations. Look, it's an old story that the United Nations gangs up against Israel. What is new is that the United States did not stand up and oppose that gang up. And what is outrageous is that the United States was actually behind that gang up. I think it was a very sad day and really a shameful chapter in the U.S. relations. Ambassador, what's the, what's the evidence that the United States was behind this gang up? I've, well, heard, we that, have, I've heard that a lot. Yeah, we have clear evidence of it. We will present that evidence to the new administration through the appropriate channels. And if they want to share it with the why American not, people, why not present they're welcome now to. When, when this like whole I said, we will present on. the evidence to the new administration. And if they want to share it with the American people, they're welcome to do it. We are deeply disappointed by this decision that was made. Look, I've listened and heard a lot of the talks over the last three days about what this Security Council resolution means. It's very important to understand it because people can get lost in all the details. The Palestinians are trying to wage a diplomatic and legal war against Israel. They do not want to negotiate peace with us, which is why they've avoided negotiations for eight years. It's why Arafat walked away from, President, uh, from Prime Minister Barak at Camp David. It's why Abu Mazen never answered to Ehud Olmert's sweeping offer in 2008. And it's why they've avoided negotiations with us for eight years. What do the Palestinians want? What they want is to blame Israel for the lack of peace and to internationalize the conflict, to have boycotts and sanctions against Israel, to take Israeli soldiers to the ICC. And what this resolution just did is it gave the Palestinians ammunition in their diplomatic and legal war against Israel. And the United States not only didn't stop it, they were behind it. Okay, so I have to ask you, Ambassador, because this is only the first resolution that's critical of Israel that the Obama administration is allowed to pass. It doesn't impose sanctions on Israel, and previous presidents have gone much further. In fact, George W. Bush allowed multiple UN resolutions slamming Israel. No, no, Israel. That's, that's all false. That's why, been said. That's, that's, that's all not false. false. So, the, what, so what why is all this Bush, ire reserved for I, the I'll just tell president. you the facts, because my sense of history goes back beyond breakfast. What happened was, in President Bush's waning days of his administration, there was a resolution that had to deal with the end of the war in Gaza, and Israel acquiesced to that resolution. We're never happy with Security Council So you're resolution. saying that it didn't happen? But not only, not only did you're they not come You're saying that it didn't happen? It, it did happen? No, even I said that it did happen, but Israel acquiesced to it. 
You look at the at the time what Israel said in response to it, and you'll see. So my the last question time, is, then, the why last all the ire for President Obama when it has no. happened since since 1967? Technically, since 1967, uh, conse consecutive U.S. administrations, starting with Lyndon Johnson and continuing through George W. Bush, they have made it clear to their opposition against the settlement. Again, well, the question is, the why the you're, ire? We're, if you'll let me finish confused. my question, yeah. I will let you answer. Why the ire for President Obama when no ire for George W. Bush or, president, or previous presidents? Look, the fact that we have a difference of agreement with the United States over settlements is not new. That's an ongoing disagreement that we've had. But this is the first resolution in the United Nations, in the Security Council, since the days of Jimmy Carter. 36 years ago, which, by the way, also happened in December at the end of his tenure of his administration. So to bring a resolution to the Security Council is not just something that Israel opposes, it's something that Barack Obama opposed. In mm -hmm. September 2011, he stood at the United Nations and he said these issues should not be handled at, a, at the UN Security Council. They should be handled through negotiations. We agree in that. We have a disagreement with the administration mm -hmm. over settlements. But you don't take, as the Prime Minister just said, you don't take your friends to the Security Council. Yeah. And this is why it was such a breach of American policy. Look, let me ask you a question, Don. Does the United States government believe that the Western Wall is occupied Palestinian territory? You, yes or no? You'll have to, you'll have think, to ask the, uh, the United States government that. But I want to say, well, you, listen, you in, re in, response, in response to what you just said before that, the Obama administration says that this abstention is in line with previous administration stances on settlement activity. This is Ben Rhodes. Listen. Not since... Not since Jimmy Listen. Carter, and I would... Absolutely not, Jim. Um, the fact of the matter is bipartisan policy uh, of the U.S. government for decades has been to oppose settlements. We've seen an acceleration in the growth of these settlements. Uh, and frankly, if these current trends continue, uh, the two-state solution is going to be impossible. Uh, and the peace that people say that they want, that we badly want for the people of Israel, a secure Israel living side by side with a Palestinian state, that goal will become impossible. What's your response, Ambassador Dermer? The, the response to that is you have to separate the issue of us having a disagreement with the United States over policy with bringing something to the U.N. Security Council. This is totally against American policy, as it was enunciated by President Barack Obama himself. I don't believe that this administration publicly will say that they think the Western Wall is occupied Palestinian territory, but they just didn't veto a resolution that says precisely that. I don't believe that this administration will say publicly that they support boycotts and sanctions against Israel. But this resolution actually encourages that. I don't think this administration will say publicly that Israel should return to the 1967 lines. But this resolution says that. I don't think that this administration will say that settlements are illegal. Do you know what? Last week, the administration pulled back from when their own spokesman misspoke it, at the State Department, they pulled it back and they said, no, we think settlements are illegitimate, not illegal. And there's a difference in international law. But yet they did not oppose this. This mm -hmm. resolution was against American policy. And guess what? We're not done yet. What you have right now with the administration is a runaway train yeah. when it comes to Israel's policy. And we may see another U.N. Security Council resolution against Israel yeah. before January 20th. You, you, what say I it's a runaway, you say it's a runaway train, but in September, the Obama administration offered Israel its biggest military aid package ever, $38 billion over 10 years. This is the most military aid given by America to any country. Is that action administration, is that an unfriendly act against Israel? No, of course not. And we expressed appreciation at the time. But this act is an unfriendly act because it gives ammunition to our enemies who are waging a diplomatic and legal war against Israel. And we hope very much that the administration will not do more damage to Israel before they leave. And I want to say something. We do not believe that this action represents the will of the American people. The president-elect Donald Trump opposes. He publicly called for the administration to veto it. Members of Congress of both parties, Democrats and Republicans, were against it. And I don't believe the American people believe that the if, Western Wall is occupied But if you look at Ambassador, with all due respect, territory. a recent Brookings poll finds that nearly two-thirds of Americans favor UN resolutions demanding a halt to settlements. That's a majority of self-identified Democrats, mm -hmm. Republicans, that there should be some sanctions toward Israel to bring about peace. Why don't you do a poll and see what percent of Americans think the Western Wall has occupied Palestinian territory? You know, we're celebrating Hanukkah this week. 2,200 years ago, the Maccabees were lighting that menorah on the Temple Mount. And now, all of a sudden, 
2,200 years later, the United Nations is going to say that we're on occupied Palestinian territory? This is absurd. Look, if people thought that this resolution was going to make Israel capitulate and go down on its knees, they are sadly mistaken. Israel will stand taller than it's ever been, and we will respond to this action by the international community. You saw what the prime minister did yesterday, but I think that's just the beginning. Benjamin Netanyahu says he's going to review his ties with the U.N. Do you think he's going to pull out? No, I don't think that we're going to pull out. I think we want a seat at that table. As biased as the U.N. is, we are a member of the community of nations and we will fight for our rights there. But I hope that the new administration will have a comprehensive review of policies at the U.N., not just towards Israel, but also towards the United States. The U.N., is a cesspool of anti-Americanism and anti-Israel activity. I hope the new administration, with bipartisan support in Congress, will look at those programs and not simply give a blank check to all of this anti-American and anti-Israel hostility. Ambassador Dermer, thank you. I appreciate your time. Thank you. All right. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe preparing to help write a, a new chapter in U.S.-Japanese relations with a visit to Pearl Harbor. Abe arrives in Hawaii today ahead of a joint appearance with President Obama tomorrow.